there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're going to be making a pepper mill. A pepper mill is one of those projects that um, it's, it's impressive. It really is. It looks great. When you have friends or family over and you've got this handmade pepper mill sitting in the middle of the table, it's a conversation piece. It's just an awesome project, but it's an intimidating one. And there's a lot of new turners or people um, that maybe their skills aren't as high as they would like it to be who are very intimidated by the process or by the idea of turning a pepper mill. And for that reason, uh, I'm going to step in here with uh, this week's show and show you that it's not as hard as you think. It just takes a bit of time and a bit of patience. Um, now, I'm not sure if there's going to be a one part or two part. Um, because of the intimidating nature of the project, where some of you may be sitting on the fence, I'm going to try to provide as much information as I possibly can and that, of course, might drag it into uh, a multi-part series, most likely two parts if, if, uh, if all goes well. But for those of you who have been considering turning a pepper mill, let's get right into it and quit sitting on that fence. Well, there are all kinds of um, sizes of pepper mills, and uh, there's an 8-inch um, a 12 inch, uh, I think it's an 18, a 24 inch. It all depends on, of course, your lathe size and what size you want to make. Today I'm going to be making an 8 inch pepper mill, which would be the smallest of the pepper mill family, um, but it's a lot of fun. And for that, uh, for an 8 inch pepper mill, we're going to need a 10 inch long blank, and it's going to be 2.5 by 2.5. Now I'm going to make mine a little longer at probably 12 or 13 inches only because I want to turn a, um, a matching salt shaker. So what we're going to do, because I don't have any two and a half inch thick stock, is I'm going to laminate some pieces together and it's going to be a combination of walnut and maple. Well I've cut some pieces of walnut and these are 13 inches long and two and a half inches wide and one inch thick. And uh, I have some scrap maple left over from the workbench build. And this will be our center stripe in the middle of our um, pepper mill to give us that nice contrast uh, of the, the two different woods. I'm going to laminate these together and then clamp them up and let them dry overnight. Um, I gave the extra few inches. As I said, uh, this is going to be an 8 inch pepper mill. You only really need a 10 inch blank, but I gave the extra for, as I said in the intro there, um, a matching salt shaker. So I'm going to glue these up, clamp them, and then we're kind of at a standstill for a little while until this glue dries. And that would be overnight is the best. And just like that, the glue up is done. You can see here that it's quite a messy glue up and I'm not really concerned about the squeeze out. Um, that'll all start coming out uh, or getting cleaned up when we start turning it. So I'm not really concerned about it. I'm just gonna let it go. I'm going to leave this overnight to dry and then tomorrow we'll start the turning process. But if you're curious or you're not sure as to what type of glue to use, you can use any type of woodworking glue. Um, but in this particular instance, any project that I make that's going to come in contact with food, and this will, um, I would prefer to use Type Bond 3. Only because it's listed as food safe and it's waterproof. So you know, you're, if it should get wet, why you'd ever wash a pepper mill, I don't know, but wiping the outside, I just prefer that extra security knowing that it's waterproof and my joint isn't going to come, come apart, just like in the end grain cutting boards. But definitely it's food safe, so that's peace of mind for me that we're not going to be, uh, you know, having issues that way. So 
Nothing more that we can really do here for now, so we'll wait and I'll see you when the glue dries. Well, here we are. It's the next day. Our blank is all dried up. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to unclamp it. And as I said before, this is a little longer than we need. We're making an 8-inch pepper mill. So what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to take it over to the table saw, square up the one end, and then I'm going to cut it to a length of 10 inches. Well, here's our blank. And truth be told, I cut it to 9 inches long uh, instead of 10 with an 8 inch pepper mill that gives us one inch of play. So now I'm going to mark the center on both ends of our blank and that is as simple as drawing a line from corner to corner. Once we get our centers marked on both ends we're going to give it a, a little bit of a center punch here. Not too drastic of one and then I'm going to use a compass and I'm going to set it to the edge of my board or the edge of my blank rather and I'm just going to draw a circle on the one end. This is just a reference point um, here and the reason for this is I'm going to take this over to the table saw and set my blade at 45 and I'm going to knock these corners off of our blank and that's just to sort of save some wear and tear on our lathe tools. Our table saw blade is set to 45 and using the circle that we drew we're just going to use it to set our fence so that we have a rough idea of where it is we want it set to knock these corners off of this blank and right about there looks good. So now that we have our fence set, um, I'm going to cut each one of these corners off to give us an octagon blank instead of a square one. Now that we have the corners knocked off of our blank, we can mount it on the lathe between centers and uh, once we get it mounted, we're going to turn this blank to round. I'm just using a stab center here, um, but you can use whatever method you have to mount it between centers and it would be just fine.
and <clears throat> there we have our blank turned to round. The next thing that we need to do is I need to turn a small tenon on the headstock side. I'm just going to come in maybe three eighths of an inch at the most. And uh, if, if you have a dovetail style um, chuck for your lathe, then you're going to need a dovetail style tenon. But for me, um, I don't have that. So I will just be turning a regular tenon on this end so that I can get this end here mounted into a four jaw chuck. Now that we have our tenon turned, um, I'm going to remove the stab center and I'm going to mount this in the four jaw chuck because we need to start the drilling into the end here by the tailstock. Well, as I said, it's time to start the drilling process, um, which will be, of course, the holes that will house your hardware as well as your peppercorns for grinding, etc. Now, each kit that you buy, because in order to turn a pepper, pepper mill, you're going to need to have um, a, a part. Oh, my camera case is in the shot. Damn it. Well, as I said, it's the point in time now where we need to drill our blank for the uh, certain um, chambers um, or recesses that will house our hardware and our um, peppercorns for grinding. And <clears throat> in order to make a pepper mill, of course, it's not just um, the wood blanks that you require. You require the hardware. And uh, I got this particular one at Lee Valley. You can pick whatever, um, whatever supplier you wish, but they're, they're not standard. I mean, they can be, um, you might find ones that are similar, but don't take my measurements that I use here as gospel. You want to check to make sure that the measurements that you're using, um, are the same as the hardware that you provided. And they should all come with instructions, with um, measurements here. Um, <clears throat> most of these instructions are going on the assumption that you know how to turn a pepper mill. This is more of um, the drilling dimensions, etc. So if you check your diagram, you should see this is our first hole that we're going to drill. And in this case, for this particular kit, it's a one and three quarter inch diameter hole. And that one and three quarter inch hole um, is going to be nine sixteenths of an inch deep. And for that, we're gonna need a one and three quarter inch Forstner bit. So we're gonna head over to the um, lathe. I'll set a, um, drill chuck into the tail stock with a one and three quarter inch bit. And we're going to drill this first entry hole of one and three quarter inches, nine sixteenth of an inch deep. Well, here we are at the lathe, everything is set up with a one and three quarter inch Forstner bit uh, mounted onto the tail stock. And we've got our lathe turned right down in the speed. You don't want to crank this through. You just want to take it slow. And the depth here is not crucial. I know I said nine sixteenths, but you have, if you have a little tiny bit deeper than that or a little tiny bit less than that, it's not that big of a deal. And you'll see why a little later on. Um, but I have this set here and I'm going to turn on the lathe and uh, we're just going to gently drill this in and uh, hopefully go in about nine sixteenths. Um, I have my caliper set 
So 9 sixteenths looks to be just about on the ridge of this bit. So that's how far I'm going to drill in and then um, I'll measure it and see how we made out. And we'll just check it now for our depth. Um, like I said, it's not crucial. You can, if you're a little bit too deep or not deep enough, uh, it's not going to be that big of a deal. We are actually just a little bit shy of 9 sixteenths, but that's no big deal. It's close enough that I'm not too concerned. So we're going to leave that um, at that depth and we're going to move on to drilling the next hole in this process. Well, that first hole is drilled, the one and three quarters of an inch hole. And now you want to set um, a one and one sixteenth of an inch drill bit into the chuck at the tailstock of your lathe. Well, here's our project and we have a one and one sixteenth inch Forstner bit installed in our chuck. Um, this is not a normal size that comes with the kits or with, uh, with your normal drill bit sets. So this would be a special purchase. Uh, if you don't have a one and one sixteenth, a one inch drill bit will do just the same thing. Uh, you just get a little more play for adjustment with the one and one sixteenth. So this first hole that we drilled is basically our exit port for our uh, pepper. And the hole that we're going to drill now is the um, chamber that will house our um, mechanisms as well as it will house our peppercorns. So I'm going to drill this one and one sixteenth inch bit as far in as what the shaft will allow me and then from there we'll carry on. Well, I've got a one inch Forstner bit and I've got it installed on this extension rod. And I just picked up this rod uh, at the local big box store. It's nothing special. And for this particular pepper mill, which is going to be an eight inch, I want to drill this one inch hole through our blank and stop it at about six or six and a quarter inches deep. And I've got a piece of masking tape on here to mark where I want to stop. If you were doing a 10 inch pepper mill, you'd go in about eight inches. If you were doing a 12 inch, you'd go in 10 inches sort of thing. Um, you want to leave a couple inches up at the top of your blank to form the knob that you will be turning to grind the pepper. So I'm going to drill this in until I reach my stopping point 
And then that is the last bit of drilling for this first part. There's more to do later, but for now, that's all we have for drilling. So let's, uh, let's drill this hole in. Well, that first stage of drilling is done and uh, it's now mounted up between centers again. I've left this here in the four jaw chuck. The reason we had it in the four jaw chuck in the first place is it's, a, it's much more stable for drilling. If you have that in one of those stab centers, um, just the, the sheer resistance of the Forstner bit alone will not allow the Storby, the Sorby step centers to hold this. So this four jaw chuck really does a great job of hanging on to it for drilling. And I'll, I'll back this off here just to show you. Um, I've got a live center in here and mine's a little larger. This is uh, an extra piece that goes on my one-way live, uh, live center here. And that fits really nice into that um, entire recess there of the one and one sixteenth inch hole and the one and three quarter inch hole at the bottom. So we need to do some marking now at this point in time. <clears throat> so our entire length of our pepper mill is going to be eight inches. And if you remember, we drilled in six and one quarter inches. So we'd like to place a mark at our six and a quarter. I'm trying not to get in the way of the camera. I don't think I'm succeeding. So there's our mark at the six and a quarter. We also need to have another mark now just above that, which will be, I'm gonna say about a quarter of an inch to three eighths of an inch above that. You might even wanna go um, half an inch. And then of course, two inches above that will give the top of our pepper mill. And those are our main marks with this lower section being the body of our mill and this being the head that we turn. This middle section that we marked right here, that is the tenon that is going to join these two pieces together eventually. And uh, now that we have those marked, we can kind of think about our design element at this point. So the layout of the pepper mill can be whatever you like. Um, there is no definitive way to do it. The shape is 100% your idea, your design. Um, but I'm going to have a base down here and we're going to shrink the belly in to give it a waist and probably some decorative stuff at the top. And of course the round knob up here. Um, but the first thing that we want to do is this center area where we mark this tenon. I'm going to get my parting tool and I'm going to drive it into here and bring this down to a dimension of one and three quarters of an inch. The one and three quarter tenon is cut and I've done some other layout lines. I've gone an inch and a half up from the bottom for a little bit of a base. I'm going to put a little bead here. That's about three eighths of an inch. I'm going to match the bead up here. That's another three eighths of an inch. And I've marked the center between the two beads. And this will be the waist of the pepper mill. Um, so I'm going to take my parting tool and bring this down to the same one and three quarters of an inch. And that will give us a three eighths of an inch wall thickness because we have that one inch through hole in there. So when I bring this down, then I just need to taper the other edges down to meet it. And I know not to go any deeper than what this uh, groove in the middle is because we wouldn't want to cut into that uh, center chamber. And that is our center waist now marked out. I don't know what to tell you from here other than have some fun now. Turn this and see what kind of a design you can come up with. Um, so you guys have seen me use my unorthodox way of, of using my, uh, my skew chisel before. 
but I'm going to use a variety of uh, a spindle gouge and a skew chisel, etc., etc., to turn this down to the shape that I would like to see it. So let's go ahead and take care of that. Here's the general shape of the bottom of our pepper mill. And uh, now I'm going to sand this and uh, don't worry about this top part just yet, but we're going to get this bottom nicely sanded and perfectly smooth. We have the bottom sanded to 320 grit and uh, I just want to show you a little trick here that you can do once you get it sanded to that point. If you take some of the shavings that you have of this same hardwood and turn the speed of your lathe up, lathe up a bit, you can burnish this piece to give it an even nicer kind of a sheen. And uh, you can see there, hopefully, that this is getting, it's not a gloss, but it, it is definitely a, a much nicer surface to it and we'll just turn that off and show you and you can see there that that is uh it's got quite a sheen to it you can you can really see it here the reflection of the light and um that's just a little trick that you can use to give it that extra little burnishing there so i'm going to call the bottom of this pretty much finished i'm going to touch it up just a little bit but our next step is to turn this top bead and again there is no um, specific way to do it so you just turn it until you like the way it looks and um, after that sand it up to 320 grit like what I've done here the top shape of the knob is now turned and once you're completely happy with your shape and the way that things look at this point I'm going to apply the finish and what I'm going to use for the finish on this believe it or not is CA glue and if you're not sure how to do that, I suggest you check out my uh, pen turning video, uh, in which case you'll see exactly how to apply a CA finish. But I'm gonna apply that finish, and then when it's done, I'll, uh, I'll come back and we'll continue with the next step. And with that, we are out of time for this week. Um, We've come a long way from the beginning of the lamination of the blank to an almost fully turned pepper mill on the lathe, but there's still quite a bit more to do. And hopefully you guys are gonna join me next week for the conclusion of this and uh, yet another woodworking video.